The Book of True Life Teachings of the Divine Master Volume 12 Spiritual Teaching 351 Love Each Other 1. I am light, love, charity, and forgiveness. Come and take from me what you need, for your benefit and that of humanity. 2. Beloved disciples who are gathered around the Master, you come to receive my wisdom, to guide your life and fulfill the mission that I have entrusted to you. 3. If I told you everything that exists in my wisdom, you would never understand it. And also, what merits would you do to discover what, in my arcanum, I have in store for you? It is the spiritual elevation that makes you worthy of receiving my divine inspiration. 4. You have evolved, and in this time, I have revealed to you what you can already understand. But I am not the one who sets a limit to your understanding. It is you who have to rise higher in order to receive more from your Master. 5. What I have taught you is enough for you to understand what your mission is and how you should build in yourself the temple of which I have spoken to you, so that you unify the ideas of humanity and know how to unite this teaching with the doctrine of Christ in the Second Era and what was said by the prophets and enlightened ones in the First Era. 6. My coming at this time has not been in the way that many expected me, and it will be you who will make humanity understand my teachings in the Second and Third Eras. 7. My people, the time to finish my communication in this way is near, and you still have to prepare more. 8. There are great temptations in the world, but as you understand my work better, as you exercise the mastery over matter, you will get closer to perfection. 9. Spiritualize yourselves so that your spirit reaches the degree of elevation it needs to continue its march ascending towards the eternal perfection that is the goal where it must arrive. 10. Remember my words of the second era. Give to Caesar what is Caesar's and to God what is God's. And now I say, give to your matter what belongs to it and to your spirit the elevation and advance that corresponds to him. 11. Now my word has not come to incarnate. It descends to you on the cloud, spiritually, to reveal to you what now you have been able to understand. 12. Over the years, temptation has manifested itself in your path. It has fought hard to get away from the true path become confused and disoriented, leaving uncertainty in your heart. 13. By revelation and intuition, I have delivered messages to this world and I have sent prepared men, chosen spirits, to speak through her to humanity. And when your heart has been prepared, you have given shelter to my spirit. I have manifested myself in your life, in teaching, in mercy and peace, but I have not contemplated whether you have believed or not in my manifestation, because my desire as teacher and father is that you can recognize the voice of who is speaking to you through consciousness in your peace and elevation. 14. I have not come to save your matter, but your spirit. That is why I have spoken to you with love, so that you may rise and be in imitation of the patriarchs of the first era, of the apostles of the second era, and so that you may be my disciples of the third era. 15. In each stage of evolution, your spirit has remained materialized, and for that reason, you have moved away from my love. You got confused, and you have given a different interpretation to my word. 16. You are approaching the end of the time when you will hear for the last time 
my divine word transmitted by human understanding. But I feel pain in my heart because you manifest incomprehension and familiarity with my word, scarce spiritual elevation, and perhaps because of your lack of preparation, will I continue to communicate through the human brain? No, beloved people, because you have heard that I am the perfection, and my will is unique. Could the Father be variable in his will, like the human being? It would not be perfect. It could not have been your Creator or your God before the sun would cease to shine, if my word and my will were not fulfilled. 17. From the first era, the prophets announced this stage of grace, and at this time, I come to prepare your spirit with the light of my Holy Spirit, so that you rise higher every day. 18. You will contemplate that those who never heard my word through the spokesperson, or were before the demonstration of my universal ray, they will rise so that I prepare their hearts, and they will receive my divine message and my orders by intuition. They will love me in imitation of the apostles of the second era. In them my word will be fulfilled. The last will be first. 19. Fulfill your mission, tribes of Israel. Acknowledge your responsibility before humanity. Remember that you are bearers of my law that you are emissaries of the spiritualist doctrine that I have entrusted to you. 20. Israel, united and eager, rise up as one heart, with one will, abiding by my law and my divine will. You know well that I am your salvation. 21. I have engraved my teaching in your heart, and my divine effluvium has been in your spirit like sap that strengthens you, and it vivifies you, so that you rise to the fulfillment of your mission, so that you may be before humanity like the older brothers. May you know how to lead her on my path with obedience and meekness. You will be the masters of tomorrow. 22. Postman, do not see my people as a stranger, because at this time I have sent these spirits to reincarnate so that humanity may reach my charity through them. 23. How much confusion exists in the world, how much deception, because instead of adjusting to my law, the human brain has fallen into materialism, paganism, and idolatry and unprepared men have dared to appoint themselves representatives of my divinity, spokesmen of my divine voice, of my love, and of my light. I find them feeding selfishness, darkness, fanaticism, falsehood, and division. But I am the perfection that comes to show you the path of spirituality and love so that you may be forgiven. 24. Materialism and idolatry reign in the world, therefore humanity has fallen into temptation. 25. Who will the Master use to speak to humanity of my truth? My chosen people of Israel. 26. Gather spiritually around the Master. You are my disciples to whom I have come to deliver my teaching, which is an open book giving you in it the clarity of the light of the Holy Spirit, so that understanding my word, you can practice it, and you are engraved with indelible letters in your heart. You are the children of light, who must set a good example to humanity, showing spirituality, love, and faith in your works. 27. I have spiritually come among you in this third era, to give you my word through human understanding. This teaching is like a ray of light that has come to awaken your spirit and make it understand that this is the voice of his God, the voice of the Father who calls his Son, the voice of the Master who, like the word teachings, in examples, in sublime maxims, so that your spirit can contemplate itself clothed with the virtues of my divine spirit. 
28. Beloved people, I want you to imitate me. I want you to be in my own image and likeness. That is why I have come among you to communicate through the understanding of my spokespersons. These are the ones I have called, prepared and purified, so that you would receive my word through your spiritual gifts. It was the hardened rocks of which I have made clear and pure waters flow for your spirit. 29. I have come at this time to make the blind contemplate my light and show them the light of a new day. I have come between you to give testimony of my presence, to give you my love and my truth, so that doubt is not between you. When you listen to my word, I want you to recognize its essence and rise up full of faith and love towards me. 30. I want you to show me the deepest regret for having stained and estranged you from your father. Be sensitive to the spiritual and may in your heart be the sanctuary that you prepare for me to carry my love, my peace, my light, eternal life. 31. Prepare my children so that your spirit is free from all materiality, so that you may remove the bandage of darkness from your eyes and contemplate me in all my splendor. The materiality of the world has prevented you from feeling fully my presence and appreciate my wisdom poured into your own heart. 32. How perfect and pure is the teaching that I have come to deliver to your spirit, so that you may become worthy of my spiritual indulgences and be the heirs of this treasure with which you will wake up tomorrow, inspired by my divine spirit, to deliver charity to a suffering and needy humanity. I will show humanity through you the port of salvation, the saving basket, because in truth I tell you that the peoples and nations, the great multitudes that dwell on earth, have been lost. They have died to the life of grace. 33. See that you are no longer the dead, because I have given you life, because everyone who comes to me will rise again. Let this life and this force make you commune with me. Do not close your eyes before this light before this greatness. See, my children, how great is my mercy. 34. You are the people in whom I have placed my trust, because you will give hope and comfort to humanity, and you will be the luminous torch that separates its darkness. Men in their desperation seek each other, some through science and others in their idolatry. When you see that women, children, young people, and the elderly cry and call me because they do not feel the presence of the Father, of that Savior who has promised to return to give them peace, comfort, and charity, when you see that this humanity washes and purifies itself in its own pain, it will be then when you must be prepared in harmony with me watching and praying for this humanity, so that through you, it may listen to me and be illuminated with the light of my Holy Spirit. 35. I will make the most hardened hearts feel the touch of my love, so that they do not continue to be the stones that cause humanity pain. 36. This is the time when you must find yourself prepared walking with sure step in the fulfillment of your mission. 37. Today I come with my word to free you spiritually, to take off the burden that you carried, to take off the chains that tied you to this world and did not allow your spirit to rise to mine. 38. You are the people in which I want to contemplate the spirituality of the just. 39. Carry your cross with love, humility, and meekness, for I will be your Syrian. Set a good example for humanity and be the clean mirrors where you contemplate your face. 
be charitable and share your strength with your brothers. I want you to show the world with a smile the love that I have given you because I will not leave you alone before the inclement elements. In this time of great danger, when temptation and great trials will come to pass on your step, you will feel me very close, because I will be in you, so that you do not carry the fear that the world feels before the manifestation of my divine justice. 40. Do not break the law. Do not stray from my love. Do not contaminate yourselves with the evil of the world. Carry only the fear of separating yourselves from your father, because that fear is the beginning of wisdom by which you will achieve supreme happiness. 41. He who remains prepared and knows how to watch over the work that I have entrusted in his hands will constantly receive from my arcane the charity of the kingdom of heaven, my blessing, and it will be the one that gives faithful and true witness before humanity. 42. I have entrusted you with weapons of light, powerful weapons, so that you can defend yourself from the threats that you will encounter. Temptation is ready at every moment, like a bird of prey, to strip your spirit of grace and gifts that I have entrusted to you, to separate the good seed from you and leave the chaff to you, like a hungry wolf to devour you. But you live in the truth that I have given you, so that you may be good disciples who show with his example this path to humanity. 43. When you have not watched or prayed, temptation has come to you like a whirlwind. Your sanctuary has been overthrown and extinguishing the light of your torch, taking the teaching from you. Then you have felt stripped of my charity, needy, and like a prisoner in my presence, you have wept and have entered into repentance. You cry out again to your Father for mercy, and then I return to deposit in your hands the Book of Light. I clean your mind, I prepare your heart, I give you a new garment, and I say to you, Get up, watch and pray so that you do not fall into temptation. 44. Unify yourselves, beloved people, so that I may recreate myself with the obedience and fulfillment of my children. 45. I want you to be as a single disciple who brings the same teaching to the world. 46. Fight, my people, with the sword of light that I have entrusted to you in my word, with prayer, so that you may overcome temptation. Fight with the fire of my love, so that you exterminate the tares, and with the light of the Holy Spirit, so that you remove the darkness of the confused, of the ignorant, of the idolaters, of the wicked, and to guide the innocent who have sought me in material sanctuaries. 47. You who are in front of these humble precincts will welcome these crowds, and with the simplicity of my word, you will speak to them of my love. You will tell them that I have come in search of sinners, not to sentence them, but so that they know me, to wipe away their tears, to remove darkness from their spirit, to heal the blindness of their eyes, and make them feel and contemplate my presence. In this way, you will give life to the dead in my name. You chosen people, you will be like a shining star before humanity. 48. You have engraved my word in your heart, and from that blessed book, when you are ready, my divine spirit will hand over your brothers. I will multiply this bread, so that the spirits are fed and strengthened. 49. You will carry out the fulfillment of your mission, not only in the time when you die on earth, because in it you will only begin to take the first steps. 
you will cause the great multitudes to come out of idolatry and leave their weapons of war so that they can receive in their hearts the message of my peace. But your spirit will continue to fight and working tirelessly even after leaving their material sheath until you behold that men, they carry peace and goodwill. They carry the light of the Holy Spirit. They seek elevation and penetrate spirituality. You will fight from generation to generation, and in this way, you will climb the mountain until you reach its peak and where you will recreate yourself with the fruit of your works. 50. After 1950, when you no longer listen to me in this way, do not become disoriented, nor say, Where am I going to walk? What mission do I have to play on this path? What is your will, Lord? Truly I tell you, you will receive my inspiration. Your spirit will listen to me, and you will feel that I take you by the hand and show you the way you should continue to search for your brothers. I will make your eyes contemplate and your ears listen to those who seek me, those who call me, and you will know that those who seek me will seek you. Then I will fill you with inspiration and I will deliver the light to those crowds through you. 51. Humanity has been purified and more will be purified in its pain so that the spirits awaken and see that their fruits bear bitterness and death. They will seek their Redeemer and find the way they have lost, but I will give this message of light, of love to the world through my chosen ones. 52. You are living in a time of grace, a new day in which the divine light illuminates the path of all men. I, the Master, I receive you, I make you rest in my lap, and I bless you, and just as I caress this people, I pour out blessings and benefits in the universe. 53. You, my disciple, have prepared yourselves to hear my lesson of this time. You have come to me with faith and hope, as you have come in times past when I have approached you. 54. The path I point out to you is always that of the law, a narrow, precise path, so that you feel safe when traveling in it. The fulfillment of that law is the price of your salvation. Do you want to save yourself and reach the end of that path to possess the gifts and power of the just? In you, you have everything you need to reach the goal. I have endowed you with virtues so that you can carry out your ideal. 55. If you feel that the struggle to achieve the triumph of your spirit is arduous, use the strength you have. If the vicissitudes of this world hurt you, clothe yourselves with patience. If human incomprehension makes you suffer, raise your spirit and here, in my company, silence your complaints and return to your world in peace, without breakdowns or grudges, but loving and forgiving as good disciples. 56. Pour out this teaching that I have brought to you so that the world may feed on it, because the hunger and thirst they suffer are overwhelming. 57. Do not miss the moment when your brothers present their need to you. Bring comfort to their spirit, to alleviate their sorrow, because their scarcity and spiritual illness is more painful and pressing than that your body experiences. 58. Your word as a disciple will have the virtue of removing the mist, the sadness that surrounds the heart of your brothers. 59. I have called you to fulfill that blessed desire that you present to me to perfect your spirit, to go further beyond human knowledge, to penetrate into the divine arcanum. 
and I who am attentive to your requests, and I long for your advancement, I have overflowed my word so that you may feel happy. 60. When this time passes and only the memory of this manifestation remains in you, you will consider yourselves blessed, and when you read my word in the books, you will water with your tears those pages written with love and the tenderness that you as my children inspire in me. 61. The moment is near when you will be in front of this humanity as witnesses of my coming, and you must from now on make resolutions and clothe yourselves with strength, because this test that awaits you is great that nothing move you, beloved disciples, and just as my word has shown you a single course, love and truth, you also be the tireless sowers of this seed among humanity. 62. Your staff will be prayer. It will prepare you for good. In that prayer, you will feel that your spirit transports to other valleys, to higher scales, higher the greater your preparation, and in her you will breathe peace. You will feel inspired by the beings that inhabit them, just and virtuous, and they will take you to my presence. In that communion I will give you my new revelations and mandates. 63. I want you to rest from your long pilgrimage, to stop crying in this valley, to rise spiritually. 64. I announce that you will still see the most great calamities, which will be the consequence of selfishness and human ambition, of the lack of love and charity. What will you do in that time, Israel, when you see all those forces of nature unleashed whipping your brothers? You will see this world, the presence of large earthquakes. The waters will come out of their channel, and parts of the sea will become land, and other lands will be invaded by waters. Men will leave their regions, and even their countries, in seeking salvation. The rains will devastate like the flood of the first era, many cities, and how only a few will escape these rigors. 65. How will you receive those beings who will come fleeing from so much misery and pain, searching in this nation for the Ark of the Savior? Will you know how to obey my will and share your bread and your home with them? 66. A time of great events for the world will soon begin. The earth will shake, and the sun, it will make burning rays fall on this world that will burn its surface. The continents from one point to another will be touched by pain. The four points of the earth will undergo purification, and there will be no creature that does not feel rigor and atonement. 67. And after this great chaos, the nations will regain calm, and the natural elements will quiet. After that stormy night in which this world lives, the iris of peace, and everything will appear. It will return to its laws, to its order and harmony. 68. You will see again the clean sky and the fertile fields. The waters in its current will once again be pure, and the sea will be lenient. There will be fruits on the trees and flowers on the meadows, and the crops will be abundant. And the man, who will have been purified and healthy, will feel worthy again, and will see his way prepared for his ascension and return to their Lord. 69. Everything will be clean and spotless from the beginning, so that it is worthy of possessing the new time that is closer, because I have to lay the new humanity on firm foundations. 70. There are many beings who only wait 
for the resurgence of virtue in this world to descend and fulfill the mission that I have entrusted to you. Prepare and be ready to receive them when that time comes and shorten the days of your purification with your works of charity. 71. I will penetrate into all homes and through consciousness I will speak to the spirit of the rulers, to the parents, judges and teachers, and I will leave the law printed on them. 72. The reign of evil, which for so long has reigned in this world, is about to disappear, to give room for the reign of the spirit, the loosening of the gifts and spiritual powers that exist in man, by which they have a very high destiny. 73. Many of you will be witnesses of these events that I announce to you today. Some believers and others unbelievers you will see these words come true. 74. Wait, watching the fulfillment of these prophecies. Always be vigilant so that no test makes you weak and take my words which are printed because each one of them contains wisdom and power that will save you if you know how to apply them in your life. 75. If you know how to keep praying and practicing my teaching, you will achieve your spiritual progress and you will know how to pass consciously to the new stage that you are going to live. You will feel my presence in your acts, in your meetings, and inspired by me, you will carry out works that correspond to your dignity as my disciples. 76. Live in harmony of wishes and ideals with your teaching brothers, even if you are distant, that your spirit is united to theirs, and all of you live in communion with me. This is my will. 77. Feel my breath when you hear my word, because it is life for everyone who knows how to understand it, so that tomorrow you may be my disciples, that you fulfill my law so that you do not feed Sodom and Gomorrah. I come to give you my word, so that you may understand what are the true riches of the Spirit, so that you may become spiritual and be worthy to inherit my kingdom. 78. I give you the light of my Holy Spirit, so that you do not succumb to darkness. I have come to speak to you, so that you can give me a dwelling in your heart to make it a sanctuary of my divinity. 79. What feeds the world at this time? Pride, vanity, hatred and pleasures, vices that make the spirit and the matter. But I want to contemplate you free from that materialism, and for that reason I have left only to your spirit the white clothing. At the end of the day, I want to receive you in my fatherly arms and say, Welcome, you who knew how to live within my law, and you separated yourself from the world to become my workers. 80. Everyone who listens to my word and puts it into practice will be worthy of receiving my charity from my arcane. That will be when you let it be shown to others as a clean mirror. In it there will be a gift of healing, a prophetic word. It will be like a spring, crystalline, for those who thirst for my word. I will put my divine word in him and entrust him with my balm, so that he may give comfort to all who suffer. 81. I will make peace and joy wherever he sits, and I will entrust him with a sword to fight all idolatry. 82. Teach your children to seek me spiritually. Tell them that you sat with me at my table and that you are not the idolaters. If they do not know me, love them and forgive them. 83. 
The nations mark their borders and rise up in war, sowing death. And I have come in spirit to prepare a few, and those are you who are part of the new generations that tomorrow will seek me in spirit to spirit. By that time, the peoples of the earth will no longer prepare for war. They will welcome me into their spirit. 84. I want you to be the first and to prepare yourselves to give the good news, to be the example before your brothers. 85. It is my will that you purify yourselves, because what is stained does not reach me, and your pain is very great. Rise up to my spirit to mitigate your pain. I remove evil from you so that there may be well-being and joy in your spirit, so that you rise to the top of the spiritual mountain. 86. Feel love for your master and for humanity. Do not withhold my charity. Fight to free your brothers of fanaticism and in this work my spiritual world will be with you. You are my witnesses, and through you, I will give good news to the world. My peace be with you.